please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We would like to welcome each of you to our meeting this evening. We appre appreciate that you've taken um, time out of your day to attend, participate, and see your local government at work. I would like to highlight that we have business tonight as the local building authority, the redevelopment agency, and the city council. I want to make um, that dis distinction for the public's understanding and to ensure we have a clear record. Uh, <laughs> Little known fact, council members don't just serve on the city council. When we're elected, we're elected to also serve as a local building authority board and the redevelopment board. Think of it as the council wearing three different hats. We are beginning with the business of the local building authority, then redevelopment agency, and then we'll move on to city council business. The local building authority is a fin financial tool enacted by the city to facilitate the construction of two new branch libraries, Glendale and Marmalade. Each year, the council, acting as the as the as the LBA, approves payments. To start tonight's meetings, we have laid out some guidelines for the quorum and civility to make sure people feel comfortable and safe to participate. Please be. Please be respectful during other people's comments. Avoid cheering or jeering because it could cause someone to feel intimidated. Please also help take care of this historic meeting room by not standing on furniture or leaning against decorative pieces. If you have a sign, prop, or other piece of equipment, please make sure that it does not cause disruption or block other people's views. Signs wider than your chair will be displayed in the hall. Also, items like sticks and dowels are not allowed. Please do not appro approach the dais. If you have something to pass out to the council, a staff member can assist you. Our staff is here to help you. If you need any assistance or have any questions, please raise your hand and a staff, staff person will come help. Also, we recognize that two minutes of comment time may not be long enough to get all your thoughts um, outlined tonight. Please visit our website, slccouncil.com, or refer to the contact information sheets by the speaker cards for information about other ways to share your comments with the council via email, phone, or email. Um, I should remind the public that we have uh, parking validations for anybody who parked uh, in the underground library parking garage. We are at item A4 of the LBA agenda to have the board. Approve the local building authority meeting minutes of Tuesday, June 4th, 2019. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It has been moved by LBA board member uh, Wharton and seconded by LBA board member, member Mendenhall. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We have no public hearings today as a LBA. Next, we are at section C, potential action items. Item C1 is regarding a resolution adopting the final budget for the capital projects fund of the local building authority of Salt Lake City, Utah for fiscal year 2019-20. I would look for a motion. Madam Chair, I move the board approve a resolution adopting the final budget the, uh, for fiscal year 2019 and 20 of the capital projects fund of the local building authority. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. It has been moved by LBA board member Rogers and seconded by LBA board member Wharton. Is there any discussion? Okay. No discussion. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We have no other LBA business. This LBA meeting stands adjourned. We are now convening as a redevelopment agency board. As the RDA, we have no public hearings. Next, we are a potential action items. Items C1 is regarding a resolution adopting the final budget for the redevelopment agency of Salt Lake City, Utah for fiscal year 2019-20. Madam Chair. 
I would move that we adopt the resolution for the, um, for the budget for the redevelopment agency of Salt Lake City for fiscal year 2019-2020. Second. It's been moved by board member Fowler and seconded by board member Wharton. Is there any other discussion? Chair. Mm -hmm. Just for clarification, when I'm looking at this one, it asks that we read a little bit more. Um, can I see yeah, it? let me pass it to you and you can reread that one. It's just the, it. sorry, just the red text on the large motion sheet and then Thanks. that way you don't have to read all the black text, just the red. Got it. So Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. I would move ahead. that the board adopt the fiscal year 2020 RDA budget reflected in the attached key changes spreadsheet with the clarifications, contingent appropriations, and legislative intents as shown on the motion sheet. Second. Second. Ooh. It's been moved by board member uh, Fowler and seconded by board member Wharton. Aww. Is there any other discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. <coughs> we have no other RDA business. This RDA meeting stands adjourned. We're now convening as the city council. Madam Chair. Yes. I move the council approve the work session meeting minutes of Tuesday, May 14th, 2019, as well as the formal meeting minutes of Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019, and Tuesday, May 28th, 2019. Second. It's been moved by city council member uh, Mendenhall and seconded by city council member Fowler that we approve the minutes. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. <coughs> Next, we are at the public hearing portion of our council meeting agenda. Item B1 is regarding a grant application requesting to fund a full-time civilian program coordinator and computer for the Salt Lake City Police Department's peer support program. Is there anybody that wishes to speak to this item? Madam uh, Chair? Yes. Seeing no comments, I move the council close the public hearing and refer this item to a future consent agenda. Second. Okay. It's been moved by Council Member Rogers and seconded by Council Member um, Johnston. Is there any other discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. The motion passes. We are at potential actions item C1 regarding an ordinance amending the final budget of Salt Lake City, including the employment staffing document for fiscal year 2018-19. Budget amendments happen several times each year to reflect adjustments to the city's budgets, including proposed project additions and modifications. I look Madam for Chair? Motion. Yes. I move that the council adopt an ordinance amending the FY 2018-19 final budget of Salt Lake City as proposed by the administration, except for item A6 and with the addition of item I1 funding contingency as shown on the adoption ordinance. Okay. It's been moved by council member uh, Luke and seconded by council member Fowler. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. We are at item C2 regarding an ordinance amending section 14.52.030 of the Salt Lake City Code pertaining to the disposition process of city-owned alleys. Look for a motion. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move the council adopt an ordinance amending the city zoning ordinance pertaining to the disposition process of city-owned alleys. So we move by council member uh, Rogers and seconded by Council Member Fowlers. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Roll call it. Roll was Chris and me. So, um, Council Members in favor were Rogers, Johnston, and Luke and Fowler. Um, Council Members in opposition were um, Mend Council Member Mendenhall and Council Member Wharton. And where were you? I said, I, you were yeah, yeah, okay. And Valdemores was in favor. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Next, <clears throat> next, ordinances listed below C3 uh, through C12 are associated with implementation of the mayor's recommended budget for Salt Lake City, including the library fund for the fiscal year 2019 20. Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd like to read a, a statement on behalf of the council. Please do. 
As council members, we always take our jobs as guardians of the public funds very seriously. Solid oversight is especially important this year. The first full year that new sales tax revenue is entrusted by us or to us by taxpayers. Over the, last, over the past year, council members have raised concerns about city housing and sustainability funds to make sure that they are used in the most efficient way possible, refuse confusion among city departments, improve transparency, and eliminate duplication of efforts of effort where possible. With this budget process, the city council is doing everything we can to foster efficiency, clarity, accountability, and transparency in the city's budget. The mayor has the authority to recommend a budget. The city council considers that recommendation and makes a decision of how to appropriate tax dollars uh, to each department. The city council uses both its policy making role and its oversight role in making budget decisions. Debates between the two branches of city government over how to best allocate taxpayer dollars are not new. The city council is acting in its oversight role to focus on proper accounting and, deci to focus on proper accounting and decisions that are transparent. It's all part of our policy making role. This year, streamlining government has, been, has become even more important. We have been working diligently on multiple areas for a more efficient government. They include streamlining efforts such as, one, ensuring $2.59 million, .5 million uh, in funding for affordable housing loan program is available quickly and streamlining it by consolidating two processes into one. Two, allowing more time for conversions on nearly $2 million in other proposed funding for new housing programs. Three, in sustainability, no long-term goals or programs have been delayed by this examination. The council's decisions are about making sure this valuable program has funding to thrive for as long as possible. Four, spending new sales tax revenue through funding our future initiative on increasing all facets of public safety through police, fire, and 911 dispatch departments. Five, restoring homeless services funding of $125,000 $125, for services to continue throughout the year, ensuring no lapses. Six, adding a fire inspector for building plan reviews to add efficiency improvements. Seven, allowing time for additional review and discussion on the fleet block development to make the most of a huge project and opportunity. Eight, restoring funding for training and general staff support within the budgets of various city departments and functions, including necessary travel for economic development purposes and fire department training. Nine, and supporting the Building an Equitable City initiative by continuing the con conversation to ensure that over $450,000 are used towards identifiable, achievable goals. And other quality of life improvements such as over $300,000 in new urban forestry funding, including more trees, support for areas around the Homeless Resource Center locations, exploring options for the 4th Avenue Well Project, funding a pilot program for traffic calming efforts, and exploring the possibility of more public safety patrolling at city parks. The uh, result of this attention to financial details has been a streamlined budget that provides for a better quality of life for Salt Lake City residents. We have confidence this work will help us continue to build a stronger, more vibrant, transparent capital city. And I also want to call out um, uh, three of my colleagues, uh, Councilmember uh, Fowler, uh, Mendenhall, and Valdemoros. Uh, for their efforts uh, to fund um, free menstruation uh, products uh, in city uh, buildings, and hopefully we'll, we will be expanding that uh, in the near future. So thank you to all of you, and with that, um, we'll go through the budget motions. All right. Um, I will look for a motion Okay, uh, Council Member uh, Valdemoros, uh, I move that the Council adopt an ordinance approving Salt Lake City's fiscal year 2019-20 budget as outlined in the attached key changes, spreadsheets, and staffing document, excluding the schedule for capital projects and debt, the library fund, and the following item, which will be considered separately. Uh, Madam mm -hmm. Chair, sorry to interrupt. Yes. That would be me. Mm -hmm. um, I just noticed that the order that you're going on your motion sheet is different than on your agenda, which is fine, but I think you just ought to take a motion to modify the agenda and take things out of order. Okay. Uh, okay. Council Hold member, or, or, uh, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, I move that we uh, suspend the rules and, and take items out of order uh, that are listed on the budget, or on Set. the agenda. 
And, and I think that's consistent with the council's approach of considering all the budget ordinance, budget related ordinances in one group as opposed to individual items, even though there are dozens of ordinances. So, um, but just for the public's information, that's that's what's going on is items um, C three to C twelve are all associated with the annual budget. Yep. So. And all we're doing is clarifying for the record later that the order in which apparently you're going to consider these is different than the order in which they're listed on the agenda. But you're going to consider all of them anyway. So, Council Member Johnston, you are, you are okay um, staying for that motion? And yes. Then you can re okay. I'll second that motion, Madam Chair. Great. All right. So, it's been moved by Council Member um, <clears throat> Luke and seconded by Council Member Johnston. Is there another discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. Now go back to your original motion, Councilmember Luke. So that was the original motion. Now, if I you would like to the, uh, no, go was... out of order, suspend the rules. Oh, that that was. Yeah, we just had that motion to okay. go out of order. So I so I already read I already read the first motion. I'm going to go back and read it again, just okay. because we um, yeah. are, right. are now lost with everything else. So. Um, <laughs> No, it's okay. Uh, so I move that the council adopt an ordinance approving Salt Lake City's fiscal year 2019-2020 budget as outlined in the attached key changes spreadsheets and staffing document, excluding the schedule for capital projects and debt, the library fund, and the following item, which will be considered separately. I'll second that again, Madam Chair. All right. So by Council Member Luke and seconded by Council Member Johnston. Is there any other discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chair, uh, for motion 1A, it involves Volunteers of America Utah for whom, with whom I am currently employed. I've recused myself from discussion on this item throughout our process, and I'm going to recuse myself from this vote as well. All right, thank you very much, Councilmember Johnston. Councilmember Rogers. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Madam Chair, I move the council approve $500,000 of one-time <coughs> funds in the fiscal year 2019-20 budget for Volunteers of America, street outreach, and mitigation. Second. All right, we move by Council Member Rogers and seconded by Fowler, <laughs> by Council Member Fowler. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry, is there any other, is, sorry, I'm going step back, um, or is there another discussion? Is there any discussion? Okay, so now all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those of, I, those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Madam Chair, I move the council um, adopt. Oh, I'll wait for him to get back. I move the council adopt an ordinance approving the budget for the library fund for fiscal year 2019 uh, 2020. Second. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's been moved by Council Member Wharton and seconded by Council Member Fowler. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I move that the council adopt an ordinance setting the final rate of tax levy, including the final levy for the library fund, upon all real and personal property within Salt Lake City, made taxable by law for fiscal year 2019-2020 as listed on the motion sheet, and authorize the council chair to sign the necessary documentation for the uh, state tax commission a tax of .004623 on each dollar of taxable valuation of which A, .003205 shall be credited as revenue in the general fund generating $85,840,025 of ongoing revenue, and B, .000025 shall be credited to the judgment levy for the general fund, a one-year adjustment generating $678,442 of one-time revenue, and C, .000648 shall be credited toward repayment of general obligation bonds generating $17,362,742 of ongoing revenue, and D, Point zero 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 seven four one shall be credited as revenue in the special library fund generating twenty million two hundred and sixty five thousand six hundred and forty dollars of ongoing revenue and E point zero 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 four shall be credited to the judgment levy for the library fund, a one year adjustment generating hundred one hundred and nine thousand three hundred and ninety six dollars of one time revenue. We move by Council Member Luke and seconded by Council Member Mendenhall. Is there any other discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chair, I move that the Council adopt $33,126,371 to be transferred into CIP, including approving $13,219,666 in funding for annual debt service, as detailed in the Mayor's recommended CIP budget, and with the understanding that funding for CIP projects will be considered separately later this year. Second. Been moved by Council Member Luke and seconded by Council Member Wharton. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chair? Yes. Council Member I move Farmer. that the Council adopt the legislative intent statements as outlined on the motion sheet under Motion 5, items A through N. And if I may continue in reading uh, the, the, the next two uh, legislative intent statements. Please go ahead. A. Golf, food, and beverage options. It is the intent of the council to ask the administration to examine the open space zone ordinance with the goal of removing barriers to providing flexible food and beverage options and golf courses. To the extent that barriers exist in state law, the council requests an analysis of those and that changing them be identified as a future legislative priority. <coughs> B, the fire department medical response team. It is the intent of the council to ask the administration to continue to evaluate call volume over the next 12 to 18 months to determine the cost benefit of a medical response team approach for other areas of the city with a high volume of medical calls. Madam Chair, I'll continue reading item C, the police uniform allowance. It is the intent of this council that from the outset of the next MOU process with the Salt Lake City Police Association, the administration include discussion of the uniform allowance with the intent to make it more competitive with local agencies. Item D is the park ranger program. It is the intent of the council that the administration develop a proposal for council <coughs> consideration that addresses the overall goal of increasing the perception of safety in parks, including the concerns raised by community and council members that uniformed police officers could cause fear or uncertainty among minority and at-risk populations interfering with their enjoyment of these public spaces. Item E is funding our future. I is unspent funds. It is the intent of the council that any funds allocated in fiscal year 2020, but not to but not expected to be spent by the end of fis the fiscal year be included in the fiscal year 21 annual budget discussions for evaluation and appropriation. Item two is affordable housing allocation. It is the intent of the council that the city evaluate the impact that the infusion of 10% tax differential from the Northwest Quadrant Inland Port Authority will have on the city's ability to fund housing programs. Item three is the housing program outcome report. It is the intent of the council that the administration provides a written report on housing program outcomes and metrics funded from funding our future revenue in time for consideration in the fiscal year 2021 budget. Item four is the new sales tax funds for public safety. It is the intent of the council that the definition of quote, public safety, end quote, include the police department, fire department, and 911 dispatch for allocating of funding our future revenue. And item F is building rehab projects near the human resource or homeless resource centers, pardon me. It's the intent of the council that this funding be used for a pilot program around each of the new homeless resource centers and that the administration will provide a written report on the use of the funding after distribution and evaluate future expansion of the funding and a citywide application. Madam Chair, um, I have just one second. Mm -hmm. um, it may be slightly confusing, I apologize, um, Councilmember Mendenhall. Building rehab is rehabilitation projects. Um, they're not rehab projects, perhaps. Thank you. In case the public's confused at all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the clarification. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll take over now, um, oh. if that's all right. Please go ahead. Um, on item G, complete streets definition, it's the intent of the council to ask the administration to clarify the components of the complete streets concept and evaluate whether there are additional opportunities to include pedestrian and neighborhood safety as it relates to any future CIP project and specifically to consider how pedestrian and neighborhood safety can be built on the current ordinance. Um, item H, traffic calming. It's the intent of the council to request the administration begin a pilot program to work on traffic calming initiatives in addition to 500 North, including placement of new crosswalks, changing street widths, and other measures 
uh, and then report back to the council on outcomes and a recommendation for future opportunities. And I'm going to take this one out of order, item J, crossing guards. Um, it's the intent of the council that the administration provide a briefing on the city's crossing guard program staffing, including efforts to increase the number of crossing guards and coordinate with the school district, as well as challenges related to staffing and the city's responsibility in crosswalk coverage. The goal of further discussion is to identify further or future steps for coordination or funding that would improve the number of crosswalks, staffing, and student safety, which may include an RFP and outside contract to provide this service. The administration is also requested to evaluate whether volunteers could be either incorporated into the city's program or otherwise encouraged. Madam Chair. Uh, if I may continue on uh, item K, fund balance floor. Can, it is can I, Council Member Johnston. There's yeah, there's we skipped one. Item one. That, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that that's okay. Skipped. May I go back to um, item I? Mm -hmm. Please go ahead. Economic development Hunter. position. It is the intent of the council that the administration use additional one hundred and ten thousand dollars in funding for new staff position as needed, and that any of this funding that is not used for the new position would either be recaptured or fall to fund balance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize, <laughs> Council Member Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, uh, it was not, I did not want to read that one. <laughs> <laughs> council Member uh, Johnson. Item K, fund balance floor. It is the intent of the council to change the city's target for the fund balance minimum from 10% to 13% beginning fiscal year 20. Madam Chair, it's also item 11, a sustainability rate increase. It is the intent of the council that the administration conduct public engagement on various options for a waste collection rate increase in time for an updated proposal to be considered in fiscal year 21 budget. And I want to make this clear that this is not a rate increase. The council did not fund the rate increase because we felt there needed to be public outreach in order to make that happen so that the public could have comment on regards to an increase in our uh, waste collection program. So as a council, we were unanimous in making that decision to be transparent, to make ourselves transparent to the public so they can come back with feedback and give us that opportunity. Thank you Madam Chair. Yes, Council Member Johnston. If I may, uh, item M, green team metrics. It is the intent of the council that the administration work with its green team partners to develop metrics that track tangible improvements in job-related skills among participants in addition to graduate employment rates. And Madam Chair, um, it is the intent of the council to set aside funding for some new, pro, uh, new proposed projects to discuss with the administration the portions of the recommended budget that establish new programs not previously reviewed by the City Council. The Council will schedule briefing time as soon as information is available to minimize any impacts. The items or projects set aside into the holding account include um, $60,369 uh, for an ADA administrator position in community and neighborhoods, um, $100,000 for traffic calming initiative, um, Funding for equity training and other coordination uh, would be $60,369 for an equity administrator, $300,000 for funding our future funding for a building a more equitable city, uh, $50,000 sustainability environment and energy funding, uh, D, energy, digital equity policy, and funding our future housing programs uh, would be $100,000 of shared housing opportunities, $400,000 of incentivized rent assistance, $200,000 support for the most vulnerable, $250,000 new house 20, and $300,000 down payment assistance, and $350,000 landlord insurance pilot. All right. <clears throat> this is a Please. lot of motions. If, OK, a so second. there's no second. Is there a, a second? second already? There, do we need to have a second? Yeah. I said, so, was there, was yeah. there a motion made on? Okay. Yes. Motion made at the beginning an hour ago. Um, I'm, I'll second. <laughs> All right. It has been moved by Council Member um, Fowler and seconded by Council Member Johnston. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those Aye. opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, I move the council adopt ordinance, uh, ordinances A through G as shown on the motion sheet relating to the fiscal year 2019 and 20 budget. So these are items C3 through C6, C9, C10, and C12. Second. 
So we moved by Council Member Rogers and seconded by Council Member Johnston. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those Aye. opposed? The motion passes. All right. <clears throat> Page 11. Right. Next, we are at the comment sections of our agenda. Are there any questions of the mayor? Charlie, yeah. any, any questions? Thanks for being here. The mayor? <laughs> no? All right. We're, So none. All right, we're moving on. We're at item D2. We'll be taking general comments. I will call people based on the comment cards that have been turned in, which I have right now. Just like with the public hearings, I will call people, I will call people two at a time. Am I reading this right? The first person, please come forward to the microphone, and the second person, please be ready to follow. So we will start, com sorry, comment time is two minutes per person, and you cannot combine time with another speaker. Also, if you spoke to a public hearing item, you may speak again, only if your issue is on a new topic. So a reminder, please help create a civil and respectful meeting. Be respectful during other people's comments, no loud, no loud noises or other disruptions. Do not block other people's views with signs or other items. Let council staff <clears throat> um, help pass out any handouts you may have. All right, we, are, we will call Carlos Jimenez and after Carlos, uh, Michael Clara. Uh, mayor's representatives, uh, Mr. Larry and Mr. David. I can't pronounce your last name, David. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, City Council, my name is Carlos Jimenez, resident of Salt Lake City. <coughs> Proud to say my ancestors have been here about 9,000 years, right here where we speak. <coughs> I'm here to talk to you briefly uh, about the Korean War Memorial. Back in uh, September 2016, I walked into the mayor's office and asked the mayor's office if they would fly the MIA POW flag, missing in action prisoner of war. <coughs> received a call two days later from Matthew Rojas, who said the mayor loved the idea, we'd have a big ceremony, and we did. We honored my uncle, my daughter's grandmother's brother, who's missing in action, who was beheaded by the Japanese during World War II. <coughs> my uncle's missing in action from the Korean War. Um, <coughs> I, I, I appreciate the support that I received from Mr. Larry and Mr. Cogros recently. I want to go back to the Korean War Memorial, which is located in the Memory Grove. There's approximately 145 names on the wall of those who were KIA, killed in action. Out of those, 34 names on the wall are of those whose remains have yet to be returned. <coughs> we family represented, representatives of the missing have put pressure on the Department of Defense, MIA POW section, to identify and return the, our loved ones. Uh, there are approximately 700 human remains in Hawaii that have yet to be identified from the Korean War. They promised us that within this year, or at least maybe three to four years, they will process those human remains. Hopefully, some of those will be from Utah. But in the meantime, what I want to do is go back to the 34 names <coughs> and put a mark like this next to the 34 names. <coughs> it's a cross. <coughs> this picture was taken from the Vietnam Memorial. Time. And in memory go. So I'm just letting you know that's what I'm doing. By the way, this is $6,700. If anybody here knows anyone who wants their name on a plaque to pay for it, let me know. Time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Jimenez and Mr. Clara. So my name is Michael Clark. I just want to speak uh, against or, or ask that you vote against the T-Mobile franchise agreement. 
and, and I have some paperwork here, but you already have it in your, it's in the, your work session earlier today. Um, and if you look on page nine of your work session paperwork, there was a letter that was written by the T-Mobile about the franchise agreement. And in the letter, they're, they're still, they're, they're claiming that they're gonna be, you know, that they're gonna fix everything. And that simply isn't true. Um, they submitted a, a uh, permit back in November of 2018 that was inaccurate. Um, and, and had to be corrected. And so there, this thing that I'm just telling you, they're not being honest when they say that they're gonna put all these things in place uh, to, to prevent what happened on Emory Street. And then on page 79 or page 78 and page 79, you have this, this uh, handout there that we created a couple years ago and it gives an outline on page 79 would be this handout that gives an outline of just, there, there's nothing in the mayor's side of the executive branch of government to counterbalance anything uh, that T-Mobile did wrong. We even have a letter from Patrick that tells us in a grandma appeal where he denies, they wouldn't give us the franchise agreement for uh, Rocky Mountain Power, they wouldn't give us copies of the plans where they were denied in a grandma request. And in the uh, uh, denying our grandma request, he tells us they everything is in order and they don't have to do a conditional use permit. Two years later, they have to do a conditional use permit. So the last thing I want to point out that in the franchise agreement on page 164, it says that if anything is done inaccurately or done wrong, that they will immediately remove it. So today on this picture here, the last thing I'll point out, this is the picture of the cell tower on page 78 of your paperwork. This is a Google picture of what it looked like before. The ordinance says that you can put these antennas on an existing or replacement pole. They put it on an additional pole. They just added an entirely new Time. monopole that, that, and there's nothing that, that causes them to correct that. So I'm just saying that if you enter into a franchise agreement, why, Time. you know, how is that any better than where we're at today, which there's Thank no you. enforcement at all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clara. I have no more um, cards. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? Madam Chair, if I might for a second. Yes. Point of personal privilege. Please go um, ahead. We have discussed this Johnson. multiple times, and when Mr. Clara knows um, how long this has been going on, um, we do have some certain limitations based on state and federal law about what we can and can't do to enforce our agreements. Um, we have spoken with them, and the new agreements, I think we can get you, do you have the new agreements, I believe, uh, the new franchise agreements based on state law? Um, they are stricter than they have been in the past, but you're right, we still need to enforce those. So um, thank you for bringing that up, and we need to make sure we hold them accountable going forward. Thank you, Councilman, Councilmember Johnston. We have no new business, so we are now at unfinished business. Item F1 is regarding an ordinance granting a telecommunication franchise agreement to T-Mobile West LLC. I will look for a motion. Madam Chair, um, I uh, reluctantly move that the council adopt an ordinance granting a telecommunication franchise agreement to T-Mobile West LLC um, with the same concerns that were previously noted by council member Johnston, um, but realizing that we need to move forward with this to meet our obligations under state and federal law. It's been moved by council member Wharton and seconded by council member Fowler. Is there any other discussion? Madam Chair, just that I think we, that I, um, I have the same concerns that were discussed, so we're reluctantly second as well. All right. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chair, I move that the council adopt an ordinance granting a master license agreement to Verizon Wireless LLC. Second. Reluctant second. It's been moved by Council Member Luke and seconded by Council Member uh, Rogers. Is there any other discussion? Reluctancy discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chair, I move that the Council adopt an ordinance granting a master license agreement to new singular wire wireless PCS LLC. Second. Second. <coughs> <Reluctant>. <laughs> 
He's been moved by Council Member Luke and seconded by Council Member Rogers. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chair, I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Okay. It's been moved by Council Member Rogers and seconded by Council Member uh, Luke. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. This concludes our formal City Council meeting. This meeting stands adjourned. Do we need to do these things? Oh, go ahead.